Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and uh, today I uh, thought we'd have a look at this. It's a uh, recent eBay purchase of mine and um, what it is, this is a beta disc um, 128 uh, disc interface for the uh, Sinclair Spectrum. Like I said, I uh, recently grabbed this off um, eBay, I saw it on there and um, put a few bids in. I won this, I think I paid about 20, I think it was about 28 quid delivered. Um, sold as seen. Um, it came with the original manual for it, but that was it. I just got the uh, interface and uh, and the manual. And I've been after one of these for a while. Well, since I got hold of a, um, a good old toast rack, a, uh, one of these. That's a, uh, oops, that's upside down. That's the old uh, 128k uh, toast rack. Now, I've recently got this. Um, I've always fancied one of these for the collection. Um, this isn't working yet. Um, I bought it as faulty. It powers up. It has RAM issues and all sorts wrong with it. But uh, that's for a uh, later project. But seeing I had that, and I wanted something to load software on it quicker than you can load on uh, on tape. And I didn't really fancy a um, divide EA. I probably will buy one one day, but uh, there's other things I prefer to the divide EA, um, and there's older solutions like this, and because that's quite a special computer, I fancied a um, a more retro uh, solution for it. So uh, when I saw this going, I uh, decided, yeah, I'd have a um, I'd have a punt on it, and I uh, got it. And um, well, let's just say it, um, I was quite pleasantly surprised to find it actually works perfectly. Um, I've had to do a bit of research on it. Um, everything you really need to know actually is uh, contained in the uh, manual there. Which is very useful. It's only thin. It's uh, not many pages really. But it's actually really, really comprehensive. Um, it tells you everything you need to know about the uh, unit itself. That is actually available online. Uh, incidentally, um, most of the Soviet-based um, Spectrum Disc uh, Sinclair Disc interfaces are basically clones of this. There are copies. Um, I am uh, I am still working on my uh, my Soviet um, Sinclair up there. I'm waiting for uh, I'm waiting for parts at the moment. I've um, ordered a few parts online. Um, I have actually, I'm not going to go into that, this this video is not about that Sinclair, I have over that um, Soviet um, Spectrum clone, I have got um, a video going on about that which I'll continue updating, but um, so if to say, progress is being made with that, but while I'm waiting for some parts to come in um, for this video inverter, I've got a build for it, uh, I thought I would uh, make a little video about this scene, I've got it, I'm really quite pleased with it. So anyway, as I was saying, that's all I got was uh, that. So the first thing was, I need a uh, I need a disk drive to um, work with it. So I went and I had a hunt round in my spares and my junk, and I came across. It's probably it was probably originally used on an old BBC Micro um, up in my stores. I had a. Um, it's a forty. Um, it's a forty track single sided um, five and a quarter inch disc drive. I thought, yeah, I'll give that a go. Um, it's not doing anything. It was uncased, um, so I thought I would give that a try. And down in my cellar, I'd, this nearly actually got thrown away a, a few weeks ago when I was having a clear out. What I had was a drive enclosure, it was actually an old BBC Micro um, single disc, um, disc drive enclosure which when I got it, it had been stored in the damp for a long time and the rust was breaking out through the um, coating on it and I obviously when I got it I'd pulled the drive out of it and used that for something else and I, that bit got thrown in the cellar and it was so rusty it um, nearly got thrown away well, I'll show it you now. What we've got, oops, is this. This is what I've made. Um, that's the, uh, like I said, it's a single sided 40 track drive. I and mean, all I've done with that is um, I pulled it out of a box in the attic. Um, I've given it a good clean inside, I've cleaned the heads on it. 
I've um, re-greased the runners on it because the grease was a bit hardened in there um, and that's all I've really done to that the case uh, yeah I uh, tried all I tried sanding off the old coating like I said, it was full of rust all over it was a beige color but there was more rust on it than there was actually um, beige um, well what I thought was paint left it was in a right state um, so what I did, I tried sanding it off, it weren't coming off. I actually ended up resorting to a blowtorch on it. And it's like a plasticised finish and I had to literally burn it off and then scrape off the remains of it. And I sanded it and what I did is, I um, this was an old um, TV trick for refurbishing TVs. Uh, that is, that's not paint, it's a material called Fabalon. And it's like um, a vinyl and basically what I've done is I've vinyl wrapped it so I've done a vinyl wrap all around it obviously the bottom I did separately um, only other addition I've made to it is that obviously on the um, beebs this would have just had a cable coming out with a connector on it which um, plugged in onto the beebs power supply and um, I needed an external supply for it so I found a, uh, that little six pin DIN connector that I found in my um, junk box. I found a corresponding um, male connector to go into it. And what I did, let's put that down for a minute. A while back on eBay, I bought a big job lot of power supplies. A massive mixed lot. I got about 50 power supplies for about 30 quid delivered. All second hand off old TVs, all consumer electronics. And I just went through that and I found a nice one that is um, it's 5 and 12 volts at 2 amps a piece. So it's more than enough for this single drive. And I just uh, put a suitable connector on it. I used a 6-way because I had it. It was um, in my junk box. And I just paralleled them up. So 2 are plus 5, 2 are plus 12 and 2 are ground. Makes it nice and simple and easy. So that's what I'm using um, currently. That is uh, what I've built as a drive to run this. And just, I'm going to set this up and let you um, see it work. What we're going to use, because that um, tow track's not working yet. Is this is one from my, uh, this is out of my round to it pile. Uh, this is an old um, Strabextrum 48k plus machine. I've got a few of these to do up um, to resell. So I thought I would um, start with this one. I've not done anything really major to this yet. I've done a, I've done the simple comp vid mod on it just so I can use it easily on my um, display here. Uh, there's a couple of composite video mods you can do on these. I've been looking into that. There's, a, there's better ones than what I've just done here. Which is literally, I've just linked out the modulator so I get composite video out there. Um, I've done voltage checks on this. I've had it powered up. I've checked all the rails um, that the voltages are... Uh, Within tolerance, which they are, um, I've not recapped this yet. I've not done any other work to it. Um, it just works. It's actually it's a really good one. This one, um, it's going to make a really nice spectrum for someone uh, when I finally get around to finishing it off. It will get fully recapped. Um, everything will get done to that eventually. Anyway, let's see if we can get this in shot. Uh, yeah, that'll do. That'll be good enough. So we've got our uh, we've got our spectrum. Not done anything with its power supply yet either. That's the power supply that came with it. Oh no, it's not. This is the power supply that came with my um, 128K. Um, it's actually a 48K um, supply. And it's been bodged a bit, if we can see. It's obviously the original end's gone. And someone's using a universal end there and uh, taped it on. Now, Obviously, I would never use this to one that I'd sell or anything, but at the moment it does work. Um, I will replace that, obviously, and put a proper connector back on it. But for now, that'll do. It works. So, I've got a power supply for the Sinclair. We've got our disk drive. And we have got the, uh, we've got the beta disk interface. So let's get this uh, set up and I'll uh, show it you working. Now, first thing is, it plugs into the back. Yep. 
what I will say, this is a beta disc uh, 128. That doesn't mean that this is will only work on the 128 machines. The reason they have the beta disc 128 is that this one will work on all spectrums. I don't know if it will work on the plus 3 to be honest, or the um, plus 2As. Uh, but it will work on all the 48k um, spectrums and it will work on the 128k toast rack. The original beta disc won't work on the uh, 128k um, toast rack I've been told. But anyway, we plug this into the uh, into the back of the Sinclair and the weird thing is if you notice it covers the power connector up because what happens is you actually power the um, beta disc interface and the beta disc interface powers the spectrum so let's get this uh, set up we've got the interface we'll put the uh, we'll put the disk drive here so you can see it see the disk drive there yes bring the cable around and we'll plug the cable in it's red stripe to the Sinclair We'll just we'll sit that on there so it keeps it out of the way. Get my mouse cable out of the way there. So that'll be okay like that. Then we need our power supply. We can put off over there. We'll plug that in. We'll have our Sinclair power supply. Which again we will put off over there. Bring that round. So the only thing that was uh, back in the um, day, you had a hell of a lot of wires trailing everywhere. Remember, I didn't, have, I just didn't actually have a Spectrum uh, back when I was a kid. Um, but my best mate did. And that's right. His dad actually made a big board like this. This huge, great big um, wooden board. It was about a metre by about three quarters of a metre, something like that. About three foot by four foot. And it, he built in his, it, he had a um, Spectrum um, Plus 48 like this one. And a Kempston interface on the back. And a tape recorder. Um, everything that you, know, you had back then. And um, he built it all into this one unit. So um, he could literally sit on his bed with this unit on him. And his whole computer was all in one. And he just had one power into it. And he just had the aerial cable coming out. Which was really quite nifty. And it was a lot neater than my... Um, what did I have at the time? I can't remember if I had my um, Amstrad or I had my um, C64. But I had something like that and there was wires everywhere. Compared with his neat solution. Anyway, there we are. That's all connected up. We'll need uh, some video into that. Right. So that is the basic setup. This is about the simplest you setup you will get for a, a beta disk interface these will actually take up to four drives four double sided double density drives i think so a sing one single sided single density drive is uh, like as simple as it comes but if you think back in the day if you weren't on a lot of if you didn't have a lot of money especially you paid 109 pound i think for that new um you might have had a lot of money. Disk drives were very expensive still back then. I think a decent double sided double density disk drive back then was about 200 quid. Perhaps 250 quid. So you would have possibly found a second hand old BBC um, disk drive to use with your Sinclair. So it's not, um, it's not out of um, proportion that really for this basic simple setup. Anyway we'll get this powered up and um, I'll show it you working. What we need to do, obviously we've got that plugged in there, is we plug in, first we plug in the disk drive. It tells you you should always uh, plug in your disk drive first. So, let's uh, try and get to the power without no knocking the camera. Let's plug in the disk drive. This is where I've got the plugs set. Yep, that's where I've got the plugs the wrong way around. And I didn't plug in the disk drive, I plugged in the uh, spectrum. So let's unplug that again. Let's plug in the disk drive. That's the disk drive plugged in. Now plug in the computer. And there we go, that's the computer plugged in, that's the disk drive connected and plugged in. Now, as you just switch it on normally, as we can see, 
don't know if you can see that too well on the uh, camera, let me try knocking that light off, see if that makes it a bit better. You still can't see it very well, but anyway, it just says you know I'm all uh, Sinclair Research at the bottom. Now what we need to do, is on the interface there's a little three-way switch here, you've got off at the bottom, run which is seen at the moment, and then you've got a reset. If we click it up to reset, and then click it back down, and then we um, just pan back up to the screen. Let's see if we can uh, see if this will come in. If we actually, in fact, let's take you off the camera, off the tripod, and then I'll take you over there so you can have a proper look. There we go. There we've, this is what we've got. We have got TI DOS version 5.3, which I believe, I think, is the latest, the last version of the TI DOS. Copyright 1986, Technology Research Limited, who is the uh, maker of the beta disc. And then we have a um, an A prompt at the bottom. So what we will do, we might as well go freehand for this, it might be a bit easier, is we've got some discs. These are just old PC discs that I had uh, lying around. And just to show you that it does work this, let's take a uh, basic.com. I don't think, uh, I don't know what's on that. I think this is a blank one. Take a disc, insert it in the drive. Okay, now this disc isn't formatted, so if we do a, um, a list command, and press enter. And you say we can hear it's looking at the drive. But because the disc there's nothing on the disc, um, it doesn't do anything. We need to format that disc. In fact, let me just reset that now. It doesn't like um, booting with an unformatted disc. There we go. So let's format that disk, and to do that, all we need to do is close the drive. This is using TR DOS. Uh, I've got this room. Uh, I've got this right. We need to go into extended mode. Then we need to hit symbol shift and format, and then it just comes up. Format. Press enter. I'm obviously not typing the right command there. I've forgotten what I was doing there. How do you format a disk on this thing? Anyway, let's forget about that. I won't format one um, just now because I can't remember what the command is. I'm probably format. And I'm not telling it what to format. But let's get a disk that I prepared earlier. Alright, so let's put a disk in and then let's delete format. And let's list, which tells you what's on the disk. And let's press enter. And if we look at this disk here, I've got one file on this, which is Jetpack. Now there's a really nifty thing with this um, interface. And what that is, on the back of it, is a little button there. And what that button, they refer to it as the magic button. And what that button allows you to do, it's a bit like the um, the, the NMI button on the um, DIVIDE. You can hit that, you can load a piece of software on cassette, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's copyrighted or not. You get it loaded on the, on the um, Spectrum, you hit that button and it automatically copies everything that's in memory to a disk, to a disk um, file. Now, when you've done that, you can then rec you can recall that. You don't run it quite the same way as you'd you know load a normal um, file, but um, you can actually bring it back, retrieve it back off disk, and load it straight back into memory, just as it was left. And the way you do that on this is it's go to, and then you need quotes. So it's like going light load, but you use go to instead. So we've got go to quotes like that then I've I've done jetpack on here just while I was testing this so if we try jetpack 
and then you need code which tells you that tells it that it's one of these um, files that's been made off the um, magic button and to get code up we need to press the symbol shift sorry, extended mode code and we press enter no files I think it must be case sensitive let's try that again go to no, let's delete all that. As you can see, I am still just working on this. I've um, only been playing for a couple of hours yet. But I'm really, really pleased with this. So we've got go to. Then I use caps locks in I? So J E T P A C. Close that. Extended mode. Code. There we go. As we can see, it takes a little while to load, but there we go, we have Jetpack. And that is really as fast as it is to load it. I'm really quite pleased with that one. So get that off now so yeah uh, that is my um, new beta disk 128 interface I don't know whether I'm going to stick with this drive on this interface or not yet because the only problem with that with it only being a single sided uh, 40 track um, drive yeah you can use I can notch the discs and use both sides of the disc but the only format on this to about 150k per side which using the uh, magic button means you can save like three cassette games per disc side so six games a disc I don't suppose that's particularly bad um, I think if I was to use like a three and a half inch disc um, which can get what seven eight hundred K on a double sided double density disc um, obviously that's a lot more um, software per disc I don't know I quite like using the five and a quarter with it I will um, I'll probably get it set up like this until I've got the uh, toast rack uh, finished and working and then I'll decide whether I want to stick with this uh, five and a quarter inch drive or I want to um, upgrade to perhaps two 3.5 inch drives somewhere I've got a couple of old um, external dual Amiga uh, 3.5 inch drives which I could um, hack about and modify for this and do something similar and do them in nice black or something but uh, yeah I um I hope you enjoyed looking at that and uh, what I'm up to at the moment. So uh, I'll leave it at that. So thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.